The high renaissance in Italy lasted less than 30 years. Yet this brief epoch marks one of the highest peaks of the human spirit and of artistic genius. The rebirth of Greek and Roman ideas was an age of new confidence in human capabilities. Artists were the leaders of this new age, and their genius was thought to be divinely inspired. Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael, and a glittering gallery of Venetian painters produced works of such miraculous originality that they were placed on a par with poets and philosophers. For centuries, their works would be the standard to which all others would be compared. A new faith in man and in the power of his observation led in turn to the search for the universal laws of nature in the scientific thought of Galileo, Kepler, and Newton. Leonardo da Vinci, the first master of the High Renaissance, lived from 1452 to 1519. He was really more than an artist. He was a scientist and thinker who personified the name Renaissance man. His notebooks record an array of insights and inventions so numerous they could not hope to be realized in the scope of one lifetime. Madonna with a flower was painted when he was only 26 in 1478. Like no other master before him, Leonardo shows the virgin and child in all their human spontaneity. Expressions emerge into the light from Leonardo's smoky sfumato haze. The Virgin's delighted smile is the smile of a woman. And the child plays like any other baby. But for all their humanity, Leonardo's paintings always possess deep mystery, the sense of the unfathomable beyond our world. His sense of wonder led him into far-reaching investigations of botany, astronomy, geology, mechanics, and anatomy that would anticipate scientific discoveries by hundreds of years. Only about 15 paintings by Leonardo have survived to this day. This is his poetic Madonna Lita. The harmonious stability of the composition is typical, not only of Leonardo's work, but of Renaissance painting in general. He pioneered a technique known as sfumato, or smoke in Italian, the blending of light and shade in imperceptibly subtle gradations. Leonardo had a special affinity for birds. He paid owners to free them. The Madonna's sublime and gentle gaze focuses on the Christ child. The child's gaze focuses outward, drawing the spectator into the painting. Flora. The goddess of spring and flowers is believed to be the work of Leonardo's pupil Francesco Melzi, but there are some who say the painting is by Leonardo himself. At 75, Leonardo died in Melzi's arms, leaving to him nearly 5,000 pages of sketches and notes. In them were plans for flying machines, bombs, a printing press, a telescope, along with drawings detailing human anatomy and the workings of the circulatory system. Centuries later, it was discovered that he had anticipated Galileo and Copernicus by suggesting that the sun does not move around the Earth. And his mathematical investigations came close to defining Newton's first law of motion. But Leonardo's inventions and discoveries were theoretical. 
His unquenchable curiosity that led him from one incomplete project to the next caused patrons to regard him as fickle. They turned instead to the young Raphael, Leonardo's junior by 31 years. This is Raphael's Conestabile Madonna. His stable compositions based on the pyramid form are reminiscent of the master. He was only 19 when he painted this work. A few years later, he would be called to Rome by the Pope to paint the Vatican frescoes. Raphael's innovations in this work are his use of a brighter palette. He has taken the Madonna outdoors. But he also learned from Leonardo's work the technique of modeling faces from light and shade, as well as the use of a distant landscape as a backdrop for a painting. Even the frame is not a casual detail, but forms an integral whole with the painting. It was made according to Raphael's sketches. He was a painter of style and eloquence. He mastered the art of making the difficult look easy. Raphael was the luminary of the papal court, executing one after another successful commissions. Raphael's holy family depicts Mary and Joseph with the Christ child. This work was painted when he was 23. Scholars still consider it to be a mature work because it displays all the simplicity, clarity, and harmony that mark works of the high Renaissance. Raphael was quite financially successful. Part of this success can be traced to his highly social nature. Unlike Michelangelo, who worked completely alone, Raphael would eventually employ as many as 50 assistants to quickly complete large commissions such as the Vatican frescoes. He was a consummate ladies' man, so well liked that when he died suddenly at 37, the entire court was devastated. Raphael's pupils was Lorenzo Lorenzetti, who sculpted this work, Dead Boy on a Dolphin, after one of Raphael's drawings. The story behind this sculpture comes from classical legend. The dolphin, a pagan symbol of immortality, has ferried the dead boy ashore. In Christian times, the image took on the symbolism of the resurrection of Christ. It was Lorenzetti who designed the sculpture for the tomb of Raphael, his teacher. It's not surprising that the great masters of the High Renaissance had a tremendous influence over the decorative arts in their own time. Their sense of beauty can be found in these Maiolica household objects. Some are designed after paintings by the masters. The works reflect the Renaissance passion for mythological and historical stories from antique culture. For Italians, it was a connection with the dream of the revival of Rome's former greatness. The Laocoon, a man wrestling with a giant sea snake, is after a Greek Hellenistic statue discovered in Rome about 1510. These immense doors open to a room of frescoes by the pupils of Raphael. They were painted after Raphael's sketches. 
The room as a whole is the only reproduction of one of Raphael's loggias, designed for the Vatican Palace in Rome by the celebrated Renaissance architect Bramante. The frescoes were transferred to the Hermitage and installed as they would have originally been displayed. The scenes are from Homer's Iliad and Ovid's Metamorphosis, mostly depicting Venus, the goddess of love and beauty. In the High Renaissance, the spirit of antiquity hovered over painters' workshops. It was not a matter of copying ancient models, but a question of how to apply the influence of antiquity to the Renaissance Christian world. The Lamentation by Sebastiano del Piombo tells the story of Christ's entombment. In Rome, Sebastiano was initially swept up into Raphael's circle. Later, he adopted the grandiose style of Michelangelo and turned into Raphael's competitor. Unlike earlier versions of this scene, the characters are profoundly heroic, full of humanity and emotion. It's a painting characteristic of the later years of the High Renaissance, when the classical balance and serenity of Leonardo and Raphael gave way to themes of man's courage and potential. The work is a triumphant requiem for a hero, beautiful in body and spirit. In this painting, we see the influence of the genius Michelangelo, who first introduced the theme of man's courage and heroism. To Michelangelo, art was the making of men, an act of divine creation. He said he liberated the figure from the marble that imprisons it. His crouching boy expresses man's strength, but also his weakness. His characters often struggle against adversity, but are unable to triumph. 